Matthew Collar from Purple Insider is here on the Bart Winkler Show. That's right. We are, oh, God, what did the the guy at the radio station, I, we, he would always do, oh, NFC North, NFC North look around. This isn't quite that, um, but with Matthew covering the Vikings and a lot of Viking stuff going on and there not being any other football-related content to talk about for six weeks, I thought we would talk to Matthew about what's going on with the Vikings. Great to see you again, sir. Um, okay, Delvin Cook, obviously. Why didn't they trade Kirk Cousins for Trey Lance, though? What? Yeah, it's a great place to start. And uh, don't count out them still trading Kirk Cousins for Trey Lance. Um, aggregators don't pick that up. Uh, it's not a report. But, <laughs> I mean, it is interesting, though, that at the beginning of this offseason, when they restructured Kirk Cousins' contract, there were a lot of good football players who were still on this team that are no longer on this team, including Zadarius Smith and Delvin Cook. And when you look around, you've got Daniil Hunter holding out. And if he doesn't end up coming back as a Viking, this is a complete rebuild outside of Kirk Cousins. And of course, you know you have other talented players, Justin Jefferson, Christian Derrissaw, but it is nowhere near a roster that's ready to legitimately compete for a Super Bowl. It's a team that could probably win eight or nine games. It's not the toughest division in the world. It's not the toughest NFC in the world, but they've taken a complete long-term approach to this, including not extending Kirk Cousins, which seems sort of odd that he's still on the team almost because you don't see this very often with a veteran quarterback of his age and also his price tag being placed on a team that is almost entirely young players everywhere else. Because outside of Kirk Cousins, I mean, the long snapper is over 30 years old and Harrison Smith is over 30 years old, Jordan Hicks. And I think that that's it for the entire team, for players that are over 30. And we know that experienced teams with proven talent are usually the ones that compete for Super Bowls. So they could have a bunch of stuff go right again. They could have a bunch of these young players develop and Brian Flores, their defensive coordinator. It could all come together and have them win 10 games and have them maybe win the division if you know, Dan Campbell bites too many ankles or whatever, and it all falls apart in Detroit is just Detroit. But is that really like the outcome that you're looking for? It would make more sense to have a young quarterback in this situation, but they don't have one. And they decided not to draft one in Will Levis. And I don't know that San Francisco actually wants to part ways with Trey Lance until they're really sure that they want to part ways with Trey Lance. So it's kind of awkward is really the best way I would describe this. Yeah, it'd be like if Rodgers was on this current Packers team where everyone's basically under the age of 26. I think, you know, it kind of makes sense what the Vikings are trying to do, and then you can argue, I think, both ways. The The weird thing about it is the timing. It just seems like they decided if they if they are going through a rebuild, and it's such a, you know, such a word that is it a rebuild or a reload? Is it a reshuffle or a re-strategy? It's, so stupid. It's a rebuilder. It's not. And I think with the Vikings, they're doing it at like such a weird time that in the NBA, Adam Silver would have fined them $750,000 for deciding to tank too late. But here they are. And you look around at that division and it is up for grabs. The last time we talked, we settled on like, I don't know, the Vikings are an eight or nine or 10 win team. And they might be walking away from that notion when the NFC North is there for the taking but they might be looking at bigger aspirations here they made that nfc championship game as everyone knows they got Kirk cousins to go farther never got that far again so they might be thinking look we could win the north right but who cares let one of these other guys do it we're trying to win a super bowl and to do that we're gonna have to reload a little bit that's how i would look at it i don't know if vikings fans and those around the vikings are thinking the same thing with how wide open, like you said, the NFC is not good. Yeah. I think that Vikings fans have been ready for this for a few years, actually. Uh, I mean, because I, I, you would think that coming off of a 13 win season that trading away or releasing a bunch of players who were stars and who were good uh, and not even really making a legit attempt to bring back people like Patrick Peterson, kind of low balling someone like Adam Thielen on a restructure and letting him hit the market. You would think that that would kind of draw the ire of the fan base. What are you doing? You just won 13 games. But I also think that we have come far as a society when it comes to analyzing NFL teams 
timelines or just pro sports teams in general. We've seen it happen enough. I would not call this a tank because Kirk Cousins is still here. If Nick Mullins was playing quarterback, then you're talking about a tank or Jaron Hall, who they drafted in the fifth round. But when Kwesi Adafo Mensa took the job, he said, I think we're competitively rebuilding. And we kind of went, oh, what does that mean, my man? What are you talking about? Oh, this is what they're talking about, <laughs> where there is no tank and they have enough talent, especially with Justin Jefferson, but also they have two of the best tackles in the entire NFL. And I think they'll have a reasonable running game, even without Dalvin Cook, who was subpar last season in comparison. They have multiple good receivers, draft a first receiver, first round receiver. TJ Hawkinson's a heck of a player. Like that is an offense that is too good to just be horrendous. And you can't tear that down. You can't tear Justin Jefferson down or Christian Derrissaw. Those players are way too good. So you're in a position where you have to keep those guys together and give them a reasonably good quarterback and give them a chance to win the division while just taking a long-term approach. So I've used every word for it, retool, refresh, rebuild, whatever. But the reality is that I think what they're just doing is taking a long-term vision there also wasn't really another choice. When you look at their salary cap situation, they would have had to get major pay cuts for many of those guys to have even gotten under the salary cap. And that's why they restructured Kirk Cousins contract because otherwise they were just over the salary cap, which you're not allowed to be uh, by a certain date. So they needed to do a lot of these things. But I also think that if they had tried to bring it all back with all those guys being a year older and look at the history of teams that don't have Rodgers, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Look at the history of 12 and 13 win teams. How often do they ever do it again? I mean, you would know this. Look over uh, to your uh, West and see the Vikings in 2009 to 2010 or 2017 to 2018. I think having a general manager who's taking the approach that what happened last year was not repeatable and you should take this long term, let's not hurt ourselves with the salary cap. Let's get a little draft capital if we can, and uh, let's you know reset the roster. I think it's just living in reality because if you take more swings to try to get as many wins and squeeze one more win out of this thing, and you end up eight and nine like they did in 2021, well, that's how people get a lot of pressure on their on their jobs. That's how people get fired is by misassessing where your roster should be and your chances to win. I think if you're not a team that has Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, then you understand that you peak every so often and you got to hit on that when you do, but you can't really like count on that from year to year. So you have to build with a timeline in mind of this is the year say it's 2025, that we should have a real legitimate chance. And uh, I think if you're doing that, it's a much better approach than the previous regime, which just kept trying to justify signing Kirk Cousins by signing Michael Pierce or trading for Chris Herndon or uh, many other various moves that just didn't work. So I, I like what they're doing from that perspective, because I think had they gone the other direction and tried to repeat 13 wins, they would have got eight and then everyone would have been very disappointed. So the Vikings GM is basically admitting the season was fraudulent, like all Vikings fans hated to hear. Well, in a way, yeah, or admitting that you can't redo Do that. that again. I mean, yeah. right. I mean, like Patrick it's Peterson, fraudulent. right. It's sort of, yeah, I mean, and look, it was like fraudulent was probably the harshest way you could possibly put it. But the problem with fraudulent is everyone said that word. It wasn't like some said fluke and some said, you know, lucky. It's just that everyone focused on fraudulent and Vikings fans are like, shut up. Well, and, and the other thing is too, that, you know, having seen every game and covered every game, a lot of those one score wins were kind of like ish, like they were ahead and kind of had a bad defense and let the other team come back within one score. So I think that they were probably, and the, the point differential, and this is not to defend last season is some all time great 13 win team. This is not the 84 49ers. I promise you it's much closer to that Pittsburgh team that won 13 games a few years ago and then got blown out by the Browns rounds in the first round. So they're much closer to that. But I mean, I do think that a couple of blowouts, what happened in green Bay got away from them. What happened uh, against Dallas got away from them overall. They were a good team that sort of masqueraded as a great team, but it was their last shot to kind of try to repeat 2017 for all the years after 2017, they were chasing the NFC championship with a lot of the key core players. And if you couldn't do it 
that year where everything broke your way. You had the easiest schedule. You had uh, Justin Jefferson having an all-time great season. Your offense is top 10. If you couldn't do it then, then you weren't going to do it with this group. And I also think too, when you take over as the GM and a new head coach, I understand if the ownership wanted them to run it back and sort of prove it was the last guy's fault, but you also at some point got to make it yours. You have to make it your quarterback. You have to make it your roster, the guys that you drafted and you built in your vision and they're starting that process, but it's weird. It's a very weird season. Like what are we supposed to do with expectations for this team when you still have cousins and all these good offensive players, but your defense is way too young. Your schedule is way too hard. Are we just supposed to go like, well, if they win seven, that's totally fine. All good here. I mean, I could take that approach because I think that that's like better for their long term, but I'm not sure that all fans are going to take that approach because, and, and I know you guys don't know this very well in Green Bay, but when you win seven games or six games, it gets pretty ugly, it gets pretty miserable. So, uh, you know, I, I'm interested to see kind of how they approach that and, and how they deal with the roller coaster that's about to come. And then, of course, at some point, the big decision on what they're going to do at quarterback is it going to be woo somebody else? Is it going to be Aaron Rodgers? Because it has to be because history. Uh, is it going to be drafting somebody? I mean, the, there are so many decisions you know, still to happen. But ultimately, whether this rebuild, competitive rebuild, refresh, ultimately, whether it works depends on who the next quarterback is. But we're also still going to watch Kirk Cousins play 17 games. So, so awkward, so uncomfortable. Matthew Collar, Purple Insider. You can check out the podcast, purpleinsider.com. That's what's weird about the rebuild is if you're going to rebuild, you you at some point need a quarterback. So it's almost like either they really didn't like anybody or nothing fell to them because, you know, the Packers are starting anew and they're doing it with Jordan Love, who's a younger guy. The Bears have been building now. It's Justin Fields. It's it's the quarterback and the team. It's everybody builds it together. So if the Vikings get to a spot where they've built something they're either they almost have to go get a veteran. The last thing you want to do is draft some rookie and have him, unless it's you know like a Caleb Williams. But then they're they're not going to be you know. So I don't know. I can't. It just it's that Kirk Cousins thing is very. It just doesn't make sense. Your entire body is going forward, but the eyes are in the back of your head looking the other way. And this is why the Trey Lance idea actually does make a lot of sense because if they were to trade for Trey Lance, if he's great and fits really well with Justin Jefferson, then you'll probably win games and be excited about the future and have your young quarterback. And if he was really bad, then you win four games and then you draft Drake May or something. But this is the story of the Minnesota Vikings franchise is Oop, we win too many games to draft the top quarterback. I mean, the last quarterback that they took high in the draft was, I mean, Christian Ponder is kind of high-ish, Dante Culpepper, and then nobody. I mean, for the rest of history, uh, call, uh, uh, Bridgewater was 32nd, and they took Kellen Mond in the third round. I mean, they just have not had that opportunity very often because their entire history is them winning 10 games and sort of winning themselves right out of the conversation for a top quarterback. You do wonder, though, this year with the schedule that they have and all the new players, if it could be what I have dubbed as the natural tank, where you're not trying to tank. If you're, again, if you're trying, you would trade Kirk Cousins immediately and then, you know, uh, go forward from there and win two or three games with Nick Mullins. But it's more of the forces of nature just sort of take you down. Like it's a Kirk Cousins playing in a contract year. I don't know if, and I'm not accusing him of this, but I don't know if you can give the same heart and soul and guts as he did last year. And I thought he really, really played with a lot of heart last season. I don't know if you are feel as committed if you're him or if you want to protect your neck a little more if you're him to make sure you get the next contract i i don't know i mean that's got to seep in even if it's not intentional of the idea that the team didn't buy into you and, and so like what's your motivation just kind of like in 2017 in washington there's it's almost the very same situation so if the forces of nature and the schedule kind of drag them down and they win six games or something you're in pretty good position to try to trade up to get someone. And one thing we know is that every year we go, well, there's only one or two quarterbacks next year's draft. 
And then there's like five guys by the time we actually get there because somebody emerges and whatever else. Um, I do think it makes a lot of sense with the timeline of all the players on the entire team to look at draft a quarterback, put the guy into a great situation with Justin Jefferson and, and offensive tackles that are good and then develop the rest of the roster with plans before the 2025 season to spend like maniacs in free agency and build up and try to win at that point. It is hard to ask people to wait until then, right? But I think that Vikings fans are ready to do it because they've just been mediocre, middling, not quite good enough. And even when they have a good enough season that by Aaron Rodgers Packers standard or Brett Favre Packers standard would be like the expected is 13 and three. But for the Vikings, it's like your once a decade had to get lucky and make 60 yard field goals and have quarterbacks fumble QB sneaks like everyone's done with that. They don't want that anymore. It's like draft a guy, take your shot at the big time. And even if you don't hit on the next Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes, what if you get the next like decent guy who you can stack the roster around and give Justin Jefferson. And I, I think it's a, a, a good plan, whether it's executed or not, it's hard to say. I think it's much better than trying to like keep Adam Thielen around for one more year. And then, you know, you know, he's gone and, there's all stuff with Hunter and, but the Delvin cook thing, I think it was that because Delvin cook. So a lot of what I base off is of how I did in daily fantasy. And I remember taking Delvin cook a lot and being a little disappointed in Delvin cooks numbers. And except when he would play the Packers, he was always the best running back ever. Was this more of like a, Hey, running backs. They, this is, this is the league with running backs. Now you, you're Ezekiel Elliott, you get a contract and then you are on the street and have nowhere to go. Or is this like Delvin Cook's just not what they thought he was? Well, I think that there's a few different factors with Delvin Cook. I mean, number one is last year was decidedly his worst year as a Viking. And if your guy is going to be 28 years old and just had his worst year as a running back, what's your bet on what happens next based on history? It doesn't go back up usually. Once it goes down with running backs, it does not come back up. And I think that if you're Kwesi Adafo Mensa, you've probably taken a little peek at the numbers and history on that. Any fantasy player knows that when you're trying to guess uh, what running backs will have big seasons. Are you picking a guy who's 28 and is coming off his worst yards per touch, worst yards per carry, The advanced metrics don't love what he did last year. And clearly the Vikings didn't love what he did last year. And clearly the league didn't love what he did last year, or someone would have traded for him or signed him immediately when he came out. Everybody's got the same data. Everybody's got the same film pro personnel departments. And now he's trying to argue that while his shoulder is fine now, because he had surgery on an injury from four years ago, it's like, okay, well, this all sounds like, and those injuries, by the way, have have piled up. So it all kind of sounds like the same story with many older running backs that we've gone through. And what you'd rather be is a year early moving on than a year late, because if he is Ezekiel Elliott and you're a year late, then it actively hurts you like it did with the Dallas Cowboys last year. The other point is that they've drafted running backs. They drafted one this year, seventh round, but they drafted one last year in the fifth round. The previous regime drafted Alexander Madison and drafted Kenny Wongwu. That's a lot of draft capital to just let sit and watch Delvin Cook you know, run uh, 275 times next year, right? So I think they want to find out which one of these guys can play. I mean, Kenny Wongwu is their kick returner and he runs a 4-3 and weighs like 195 pounds. Like, I don't know, I'd like to see him get the ball if we're rebuilding a bunch of other parts. Like, let's see if this guy can do it. And I, I think that it all kind of plays in. And plus, he's just, he was going to make a ton of money. His salary cap was going to be enormous, his cap hit. And if you're going to extend Jefferson possibly extend Hunter, extend TJ Hawkinson, you can spread some of that money out a little bit more into this year if he's gone. And it's harder to do that if he's not. So if he's not going to be part of the future, if he's only going to help you win now, then kind of what's the point? But I think that that was the move that woke up everyone to what is going on in Minnesota. Because before that, it was sort of like, oh, Thielen, he must have been older or whatever. But it's like, Delvin Cook, wow. And here we were like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what they're doing. That's what they're doing this entire offseason. But it was interesting that all of a sudden the NFL world kind of went like, oh, since nothing else was going on. Oh, wow. They got rid of Delvin Cook. What are they doing over there? Well, that's why we're talking is because Delvin Cook got released. And it's funny. Um, everyone like so the Lions, this is their opportunity because my favorite my favorite stat in all of football is 
The Buccaneers have won this division more recently than the Lions, but you've got three teams now that are rebuilding, and we'll see what happens if they're all good at the same time, and it could be uh, it could be fun. Matthew, thank you as always. I appreciate you. Yep, and uh, uh, you'll make an appearance, I'm sure, soon on my show as well, so uh, thanks for having me, and uh, enjoy. I'm sure you got a cabin to go to, right, or something this summer? No. You're not a cabin guy? How are you not a cabin I'm guy? My friends, I got friends. I got I got it. But then I yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. Okay. All right. We won't get into it, but we'll talk ball again soon. Thanks for having me, man.